Hey guys, my name is Ispen. So I want to make a video about how you integrate uh, SCC 2531 uh, uh, SIGBee to MQTT gateway into um, Home Assistant. And I searched the internet for a lot of different uh, uh, guides and I found some that were quite uh, difficult to to do and also some that are rather easy and I decided to do a video uh, on it uh, because I actually found a really simple way to do this uh, so let's get started the first thing you want to do is you want to connect your uh, CC2531 uh, to your Raspberry Pi uh, it needs to be flashed but I'll not go into this in this video. So assuming it's already already flashed with the right firmware, I will just uh, connect it. Uh, as you can see, I'm using a USB extender because uh, from what I've heard, this some people have issues. If you keep this uh, right next to your Raspberry Pi, it will interfere with your the Wi-Fi gateway and stuff. So so for now, I I'm having a USB extender to get it uh, a bit away from all my electronics. Um, yeah, so let's get it set up. Okay, so here we are in Home Assistant, and the first thing we're going to need to do is we need need to create a user that Home Assistant can use to communicate between the MQTT broker and the CC2531. So I'm just going to create a user with the simplest name I can think of. Uh, all right, and then the next thing is we're going to go into the supervisor and the add on store, and we are going to find the MQGT broker and we're going to install that. Just give it a couple of minutes to install. Like that and hold your horses on starting it. Go to configuration and here you need to enter your uh, User, you log in. You usually just created a couple of seconds ago. So, um, so I'm not that familiar with the, the syntax for this configuration in YAML, so I'm using JSON. Um, it doesn't matter. So when I click save, it's going to transform it into um, YAML anyway. So we got the Mosquito Broker configured uh, and we are ready to start it. All right, it's running and running. Great. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to go into settings and integrations. And now Home Assistant has discovered your Mosquito Broker. So we're going to say configure, I'm going to allow uh, detection and everything is up and running. Awesome, that was the step number one. Now we're ready to move on to the next one. Go into the supervisor, we need to install the next add-on and that to do that we need to find a Daniel Wells' Daniel repository uh, on GitHub, uh, he has created our, a sick P2MQTT SIO add on. So just uh, pro copy that uh, URL. And then in your Home Assistant, you will add repository. And his repository is right here. Then you have to close and say reload. 
And once that's reloaded, the, the add-on will be here in the bottom. Uh, and you can click install and we will wait a few seconds for that. All right, that took a while, just have some patience uh, on this one. So now we need to configure the Zigbee to MQTT uh, add-on. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to know what uh, USB port we connected the uh, CC2531. And there's actually a quite nifty way to do that. So if you go into your supervisor and select system and hardware, you'll actually get a list of uh, connected devices. Uh, and this is CC2131, so this is actually the port we need. I'm going to copy that, then I'm going to go back into the Zigbee to MQTT add-on and into configuration, and then I'm going to replace the port, the default port here, paste, and I'm going to put in my password so that the add-ons can talk together and for some reason, I don't know if this works, but uh, I use my IP address for the Raspberry Pi reason. And remember to add the right port, 1883, and then we should be ready to rumble. So we click save. And then we go back to the information and then we start the Zigbee to MQTT add-on. One small thing I forgot to mention is that in the configuration we also need to change the permit join uh, property to true uh, while we are uh, pairing new devices. When you're done pairing devices you should definitely set this back to false for security reasons. So set permit join to true, and then click save, and it will prompt you to restart your Zigbee to MQTT add-on. Once that is done, we should be all right. So now that we are done setting up everything, uh, I recommend that you do a reboot of Home Assistant. Home Assistant has rebooted uh, you want to go into the logging function of the different add-ons to see if everything works as expected. So we'll select start with Zigbee to MQTT add-on and click uh, log. And there's no yellow or red, so everything is green. And the last thing it says is uh, it's publishing and it's connected to the server. Uh, so everything looks to be fine in here. Uh, then we're going to go back to the Mosquito Broker and check the log also. Um, it has done a couple of connects, disconnects, connects, and finally the last uh, client connected uh, with a weird user home assistant. Okay, so looking at the, the log output from the Mosquito Broker add-on, uh, I noticed something uh, about a bit weird uh, because when we set it up we set it up uh, with using the MQTT uh, user that I've created and right now it seems that that has disconnected and is recently connected with the home assistant user which is the built-in one from home assistant so there might be a problem here and I checked out a few things and if you go into integrations and look at the MQTT, try to uh, click reconfigure, then it's actually using another user. I don't know why it changed the, changed the user. I didn't set up a user when I installed this integration. Uh, I didn't have that opportunity. Uh, but for some reason after the restart of uh, Home Assistant, it uses the default uh, Home Assistant uh, user. So. If anything, we could actually redo everything using that uh, Home Assistant user. 
but I think it's a bit easier uh, and since I want control on what user is doing what on my home assistant I just want to change the user here um, and I think that should all be fine all right so now it should be running on the same user let's try, try to check out the MQTT broker again, the lock from that. See what happened. New client connected, and now we're using the right user, same user as on the Zigbee to MQTT uh, add on. So that should actually help us out a bit. All right, everything looks fine then. So, all we have left now is to see if this actually work if our hard work has been carrying fruit and uh, to do that I have this occur button uh, that I'm going to pair and I'm going to reuse the small tiny reset button here on the side I'm gonna hold that for a while until it starts to reset and I'm going to release it and wait for a second. And if you were paying attention very closely, you could see that right now we actually have one entity added in our <coughs> MQTT Mosquito Broker. So if I click this entity, it has uh, a weird uh, device ID. That's okay. So uh, I can just uh, rename that. So I'm going to call it a car button one, and I'm going to click update. And it's going, it's asking me if I want to update all the entity IDs, and I want to do that too. So it looks like this, uh, and I just need to refresh for it to load all the proper icons and stuff. So right now I can. I will press the button here on the device and we have a click registered every time I click it. At least you can see my lights are going on and off and it shows here you have a and you can actually double click it also. Um, so that rolls very well and uh, I would like to show you yeah. so now we got Zigbee to MQTT connected very very smoothly and uh, we got even got our car button connected via Zigbee very easily uh, so that's really awesome to as the icing on the cake I want to do a quick automation in node red using the acquire button that I just added through my Zigbee to MQTT uh, bridge. So I'm going to use an event from Home Assistant uh, and I'm going to call it acquire button one press. And the entity we saw in the integrations. Uh, page before was this name for the click and I'm going to click done on that so it's going to set the payload to either single double triple or quadruple so I can actually just uh, add uh, if I want to split it out I will add a switch here and send the payload to that one and here I would say if it's single, then it should output. And we can actually just bind it to our, to my lights uh, and to an output. So I'm going to deploy. And so when I press the button, here you will be able to see that it actually toggles my light and it actually outputs the payload which is single 
and I could toggle it again to turn the light on you can see that on the video so if you want to do something a uh, bit more sophisticated you can set uh, add a double value and a triple value and it also have a quadru oh. quadruple value so if we do this if the if the click is single double triple quadruple so now I can I can do automations for each of these I'm not going to turn on off the lights with I'm going to turn off the lights with a single click and the other one I'm just going to log out in the console here so if I deploy this and if I uh, click once we saw that before we toggle the light if I click twice just have to move that it will have a double and if I do it three times and if I do it four times it will register quadruple so now I have four different actions on this button uh, done this way so that was it I hope you liked it guys have fun